Hey, good morning, Algebra. So do now for today. Uh, see if you can figure out how to draw each of these two math riddles. Number one, two perfectly straight lines, like drawn with a ruler, that never touch each other. And riddle number two, two perfectly straight lines, like drawn with a ruler, that touch each other more than once. All right, so see if you can get those, figure out a way to draw those. Uh, hit pause so you got it worked out in your head. All right, so for number one, we could draw two parallel lines. Those are never going to touch. They just keep going forever in perfectly straight lines. Same direction, never touch. And for the second one, uh, two lines, it's the same line drawn on top of itself. Right, there's a little pink one there on top of the same line drawn in black. Get these dots out of the way so you can see that a little bit better. All right, so they touch more than once. They touch uh, you know, at this end, at that end. They touch a bunch of spots in the middle. Really, the lines are going to keep going infinitely long. Lines don't just stop. Uh, so they touch each other a lot. Cool. Well, Today we're looking at solving systems of equations by graphing. And uh, you remember from last time, system just refers to a group. So in this case, we're looking at two equations. We're gonna draw them on the same graph, right? That's a system. And uh, solving, the first word in the title, that means uh, we're trying to find the solution. And we had both of these as vocabulary words yesterday. The solution refers to the coordinates of the variables. That satisfy all the equations. So both the x and the y coordinate. Uh, and the way we see that on the graph is we look to see where those two lines cross. Get the coordinates of that point. That is the solution. So we're going to see both of these situations from the do now show up on occasion. I mean, you can have two lines that cross and you'd be like, hey, they cross. There's the solution is that the coordinates right there. But each of these two situations can also happen. You could get parallel lines. You could actually get the same line, let you draw it on top of itself again, right? And uh, so what do we do when that happens? Well, that's a great question. Let's take a look at these two examples. So example number one, we've got a blue equation and a green equation. We're going to graph them both. So the green, uh, blue, let's do blue first. It's got a slope of two. I'm going to draw that as a fraction two over one. The y-intercept uh, right there at the end, that's what you're adding or subtracting, minus two. And so if we graph that blue one, we're going to start on the y-axis up and down at negative two, and then use the slope to find the next point. So from that point that we just drew, we're going to go up two spaces, that's the rise, and to the right one, that is the run, and then repeat that process up two over one, up two over one, up two over one, and then we'll go ahead and draw a line right there. I'll get this line drawn right there. Get rid of these squares. All right, and then let's look at the green one. So the green one has a slope uh, right there being multiplied onto the x, slope of 2. And again, if I write that as a fraction, I'll just make it 2 over 1, so I can see both the rise of 2 and the run of 1. The y-intercept, that's, uh, uh, that's what I'm adding or subtracting there at the end, so positive 1. That's my starting point, so on the y-axis, find positive 1. And then from there, we use the slope to get the next point. So up two and over one to the right, up two and over one to the right. And then we're going to connect those points with a line. I do a green line here. And I don't actually want a dotted line because I'm not graphing an inequality. Okay, so I got two lines which appear to be uh, parallel, right? And appearances can sometimes be deceiving. I mean, you could you probably imagine pretty easily we could graph two lines that are pretty close to parallel, but if we if we draw them you know accurately enough and extend those lines long enough, eventually they would cross. And so we want to make sure that's not what's going on here. So the way we can verify that these two lines are actually parallel and we're not getting tricked, is so we're gonna look at the slope. If they have the exact same slope then they're going to be parallel, right? The exact same slope. So two uh, for both of them, you know, if it's a fraction, a, a positive number, negative number, whatever, it needs to be the exact same thing, not like, well, those two fractions are not the same, but the graphs look the same. Like, 
sometimes fractions are not reduced, and so that's actually is the same, but they, it's got to be an exact match. Okay, so for the solution, uh, what do we do here? The solution is the coordinates of the point that's going to satisfy both equations. It's uh, on the graph. It's where those two lines cross. And uh, these two lines don't cross. So for the solution, we're supposed to write an x and a uh, x coordinate and a y coordinate. But we got nothing. Right? The solution does not exist. because these two lines do not cross. And so what we're gonna write for the solution is just uh, an abbreviation or an acronym for does not exist, D N E. And that is what we'll have to put into WAMAP. You can use capital or lowercase letters, that doesn't matter. Um, WAMAP, you're gonna have to use D N E to indicate the, the lines are parallel, they never cross, there is not a solution. So if you're doing you know, work on paper out of the textbook or worksheet, something like that. There are other options you could say no solution, uh, not possible. You know, there's lots of other options that would communicate this idea, but DNE is the only one that will work in WAMAP. So again, recapping, the same slope showed up in both equations. And the two equations had different y-intercepts. So same slope different y-intercept. They started in different places because of the y-intercept, and they go, go in the same direction because of the slope, and they never cross, making them parallel. Okay, second example. Uh, again, a blue and a green equation. Let's do that blue one first. This is this, actually the same equation we just saw. Uh, so the slope right there, multiplied onto the x, that's 2. If I write it as a fraction, it's 2 over 1. The y-intercept at the end is what's being added or subtracted, so that's plus 1. So my graph, I start at 1 on the y-axis. Up two over one, up two over one, draw that line. Okay, uh, let's go to those squares. And then the green one, green equation, y equals two x plus one. So the slope being multiplied onto the x right there is two. As a fraction, that'll be two over one. The y-intercept at the end being added or subtracted is plus one. And that's uh, the exact same thing we just saw. So this is going to be the same starting point, plus 1, and then use that slope, up 2 and right 1, up 2 and right 1. Draw this line. And with the dotted line, I mean, it's not supposed to be a dotted line, but while it is dotted, you can see that there are actually two lines there. There's a blue one. You can still see it through. And there's a green one on top. And... We'll just change the transparency so you can still see that there are, in fact, two lines there. There's a green one and a blue one. So uh, same line graphed on top of itself. And in this case, we can recognize it's the exact same equation. So obviously, uh, the slopes were the same and the y-intercepts were the same. Sometimes, you know, it's not going to be so obvious. There are ways to disguise equations like I alluded to before. If the slope are written as a fraction, you could have one slope reduced all the way and the other one not reduced and so it's going to look different um for example one uh, you know one could have uh, the equation we see here y equals 2x plus 1 and the, maybe the green one could have been y equals 4 over 2x plus 1 and then you'd be like well it doesn't look exactly the same but 4 over 2 would reduce to the same thing it's actually the same slope just written in a non-reduced fraction so uh, once we identify the slope, reduce it all the way, you're going to see the exact same equation twice. So how do we write the solution? The solution is supposed to be the coordinates that satisfy both equations, or on the graph is where we see those two lines touch. And these do li two lines, I mean the same line graph twice, uh, they touch in a lot of places. They touch at these three points uh, that I drew already, but there's more points. I mean, there's another point over here. If I draw on the lines longer, there would be more points. And even without drawing the lines longer, the two lines do, in fact, touch between those dots that I've already drawn. So there are so many points I could draw. If I tried to count them all, I'd never get done. There's so many points, an infinite number of points where these two lines touch. Uh, and now I totally turned this into like a red line. It used to be a blue and a green. 
infinitely many solutions. Okay, that is the way we express this idea. There are so many points where those two lines touch that we could not ever count them all. And we're just going to use infinite. That is our answer. We're going to write for the solution is the infinity symbol. This uh, sideways figure eight. Uh, and on your keyboard for typing purposes, you're just going to type two lowercase o's. Like this. Let me move those into the answer blank there. Just like the middle of the word book. Two lowercase o's. And that is what you're going to type into OMAP when there are infinitely many solutions.